Welcome to this YSL Excel tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover the concept of dynamic range names. We'll begin with a quick explanation of the limitations of normal static range names, and then explain three ways to make your range names dynamic. We'll use the traditional technique of combining the offset and count functions, and then a slightly more modern technique using the new trim range function, and finally the trim ref notation. So let's get started. If you've watched some of the other videos in this Excel series, you'll be fairly familiar with the concept of range names at this point. I use them quite a lot. I think they're a great way to make your formulas a bit more readable and understandable for the end user. But they do have some limitations, and perhaps the main one is that they don't expand automatically as you add new data to your worksheets. So in this video, I'm going to explain two different techniques you can use to make your range names dynamic. To get started, I've got a basic list of films set up on a worksheet, and I'd like to calculate the profit for these films by subtracting their budget from their gross takings. I'd like to create a couple of range names to help me with that, so the quickest way I can think of to do that is to highlight this block of cells here, and then from the Formulas tab in the ribbon, choose the Create From Selection option. Once I do that, I can then select which, uh, which cells contain the names I want to use to create my range names. And in this case, it's going to be the values in the top row. So I can just click OK. And then at that point, I'll have created two new range names, one called Budget and one called Gross. I can now use those range names in my formula. So in column D, I can say simply equals Gross minus Budget. And then once I hit Enter, the formula will spill down the list and calculate a result for each row. The limitation here is that if I added new data to the end of my list, then unfortunately my range names don't expand to include the new data, so my formula doesn't grow either. You can see the budget and gross still refer to the original block of cells. So the solution to this problem is to change the definition of our range names so that they don't just refer to a static list of cells, they change their dimensions according to how many cells have been populated in the column. And we can do this by assigning a formula to each range name to calculate that. Technically, every single range name is populated with a formula. It's just that the default formulas aren't that complicated. They just refer to a range of cells. Just if you want to see the formulas that populate range names, you can use the Name Manager tool in the Formulas tab of the ribbon. So if I open the Name Manager, you can see my budget and gross range names listed there. And when I select each one, you can see the formula which populates it in the Refers To box. So it's simply a reference to that fixed range of cells. Now we could enter the formula directly in this dialog box here to demonstrate what to do, but I'd like to quickly explain what, um, what formula and what function we're going to use to make this work. And it's easier to do that if I write the formula in a cell first. So I'm going to start with the very traditional way of writing this style of dynamic range name. This is for sort of old fashioned versions of Excel, I suppose. There's a slightly more modern way to do it, which we'll get onto shortly. I'm going to pick cell F. Two. And to do this, I'm going to use a function called offset, which you may have encountered in Excel before. There are five parameters for the offset function. So what the offset function allows you to do is pick a starting point and then refer to a block of cells, a range of cells, and that range of cells will be returned by offset. So you start by saying what cell to begin at, which is the reference. So that's going to be cell C2. Then you can say how many rows you would like to move from that starting cell. Well, I don't want to move any rows down, so I'm going to type in zero for that. And then how many columns to move to the right? Well, that's a zero as well. And then the most important part here, the height parameter. And so currently, just to quickly demonstrate, I've got four rows populated from cell C2. So I'm going to return us a height of four rows and then one column for the width. If I just close around brackets at that point and hit enter, I've returned a range starting from cell C2 and returning the next four rows downwards. Obviously, this isn't yet dynamic. I've fixed that number four. So let's make that bit dynamic by editing the formula. I'm going to take away the number four and replace that with either the count or the count A functions. Use count if you only care about numbers. I do only expect to see numbers in my budget column. Use count A if your range includes other types of data like text, etc. So I'm going to use the count function, and I simply want to count all the cells from cell C2 down to the bottom of the worksheet. So I'm going to quickly select cell C2, then hold down Control and Shift and tap the down arrow key a couple of times to extend the selection down to the end, close the round brackets and hit Enter. 
So currently the answer is still the same. I've got the, the four populated rows, but as I add more data now to my list, you can see that the result of that offset function increases as well. And it works the opposite way as well. If I start removing things from my list, it will start going, uh, going in the opposite direction, start deleting things from the range as well. Now, it would be nice if I could just copy and paste the formula that I've written here in cell F2 into the definition of my range name, but unfortunately the referencing style used for range names is a little different. So let's build it from scratch. I'm going to open up the name manager dialog box and then select my budget range and then head to the refers to box, delete what's in there at the moment and replace it with equals offset and then open up some round brackets. Now, unfortunately, we won't get any help here. Um, we have to rely on what we've remembered about the offset function. So the first thing to do is say to the reference. So I'm going to start from cell C2. And you can hopefully see that the style of reference that's just been added there has included the name of the worksheet and the dollar symbols for absolute cell referencing. From there, I know that I want to go zero rows down and zero columns to the right. So comma zero and then um, a comma zero and another comma. And then the important part, using the count function to count how many cells are populated from cell C2 downwards. So I'm going to select cell C2, hold down Control and Shift and tap the down arrow key a couple of times, and then close the round brackets for the count function, type in another comma, and then the number one to include one column width. Close the final set of round brackets, so that's the entire formula written out. I can now click the tick to update the definition of my budget range. And you might notice that, um, that it changes a little bit to the display of budget in the name manage dialog box. It doesn't show you the actual values any longer, unlike the gross one, which is pointing to that fixed range of cells still. Anyway, I'm gonna hit the close button on the name manager dialog box and see that at the moment, my formula, I've got an error, of course, for the extended row because there's no corresponding row in the gross range name yet. In fact, just to tidy up, let's get rid of those extra sample values. But you can see, even with the same formula, gross minus budget, we're still returning the same answers at this point. One slight weird side effect of writing a formula, a more complex formula for your range names, is that you can't any longer select them from the name box, which is a bit of a shame, um, but they do still exist, of course, if you look in the name manager dialog box, but it is still clearly a range name in this workbook. So there you go, there's very much the traditional way of making a dynamic range name. So that technique certainly works, but there's actually a much easier way to do things these days with the introduction of a modern function called trim range. You may have seen a previous video in this series on that topic. Um, so for the gross range, let me just very quickly once again pick a blank cell in the worksheet and say equals uh, trim range. And then I'm simply going to reference everything from cell B2 down to the end of the worksheet. If I then close around brackets and hit enter, Hopefully you can see here the dynamic array has only included the three populated cells, but as I add more data to the end of the list, that automatically grows and increases the size of the dynamic range. Much simpler than a combination of offset and count. So let's apply that to our gross range name again. I'm going to head back to the name manage dialog box, select the gross range this time, and again start by wiping out whatever's in the refers to box initially and replace it with trim range can then open up some round brackets, select cell B2, hold down Control and Shift and tap the down arrow key a couple of times, and then close the round brackets. So if I just zoom in quickly, there you go, there's the entire formula, so much more simple. If I then just hit the tick to update that range and then close the dialog box down, we've currently got our gross and budget range names completing that formula as in the past. But now if I start adding new data to the end of each list, my range names will automatically grow and therefore so will the list of cells containing the answers. Now, if you watch the video on the trim range function, you may well realize that there's an even shorter way of doing exactly what we've just done here. So the trim range function is basically used to trim off empty cells from the range of cells you've referenced. And rather than using the function to do that, you can use the trim ref notation. So heading back to my Excel workbook, 
I'm just going to modify the formula in this uh, cell G2 first of all. So I'm going to change this so that I'm not using the trim range function. Let's get rid of that in the round brackets. And then the trim ref notation uses a full stop or a period character either side of the colon character to trim empty cells. So the full stop on the left hand side here trims empty cells at the beginning of the range and the full stop at the end there after the colon trims empty cells at the end of the range. Technically because I'm expecting the top of the range to always be populated I can get away here with just saying colon dot and that would have the desired effect. So if I do that and then just quickly add some more data to see that it grows. There we go, so that part's working. And I can apply that just to the definition of my range name as well. So heading back into the name manager, I can select my gross range name, and then I can edit this formula, take away the trim range function and the corresponding round brackets, and simply add a full stop after the colon in that cell reference. Okay. So I'm going to click the tick to update the definition of the range and see the same results as before. And again, if I add new data to the end of the list, my range names expand to include it in the answer range as well. Now you may just have watched that entire video thinking, I could have just done all that by converting this list of cells into a formal Excel table and then just using structured table references to create my formulas. You'd get the benefit of named cells with the added benefit that those structured references also increase in size. We'll have a video on that in this series at some point to explain what I mean there. Um, but dynamic range names do still have their place. Of course you could use a table when, you're, uh, when your data is arranged like a table like this, but what if your data was arranged more horizontally like in this very rudimentary cash flow system here on the other worksheet? I'd want the ability to write a formula to work out my net profits for each month, but have that formula increase in size as I add more data to the subsequent months in the cash flow. So I can begin here by creating a couple of range names, one called costs and one called revenue. Let's just do that fairly quickly. I'm going to do that by typing in the range name this time. So costs for this one and revenue for this one. I could have just created the entire thing in the name manager dialog box, to be honest, but anyway, I've started. Um, so I'll um, finish. Okay, so I've got my two range names existing already. What I'm now going to do is write a simple formula that's going to be equals costs plus revenue. And now I want my range names to expand automatically horizontally as I add more data to the subsequent months. So back into the name manager, if I head to the formulas tab of the ribbon, head to the name manager, and then select my costs range name first of all. Um, without selecting any cells this time, I'm actually just going to modify this very quickly by adding a full stop after the colon there between these two cell references. And then rather than manually selecting all the cells on the row, I know that the last column in the Excel worksheet is column XFD. So I can just type that in manually and that'll be absolutely fine. I'll click the tick to update the costs range. And then likewise for the revenue, if I select revenue, and then again, enter a full stop after the colon and then change the cell reference H to say X F D. Click the tick to update the definition of the range and then close down the dialog box and my range names still currently are working to create my formula costs plus revenue. But if I now start adding in more data at the end, let's add some more costs and then some more revenue my answer range expands horizontally as well. So this is perhaps a better use for dynamic ranges than the table style because there's an, a, perhaps an easier way to do this with tables. But nice to know that it works in both directions. Um, yeah, using the trim range on trim ref notation. If you wanted to do it using the old fashioned technique using uh, offset and count, then of course, the only thing that would be different about our previous examples is that rather than using the height parameter of our offset function, you'd be using the width parameter instead. So I'd be saying offset from this cell, go zero rows down and zero columns to the right, give me a height of one row, and then count everything from this cell all the way across to the end of the worksheet to give me the width parameter. So at that point you can see 
that I pretend the dynamic dynamic range that's horizontally organized. And again, if I add more data to the end of the list, that range will grow as well. So there you go, a couple of different ways of making your range names a bit more dynamic than they initially appear. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.